Hello, everybody. This is Tracy with the Health and Fitness Show with Tracy. Welcome. For those that don't know me, I am Tracy Markley. I've been in the fitness industry for nearly 30 years and author of 14 books and the host of the Health and Fitness Show with Tracy on KXR Radio. And then I took a hiatus and now it's back on podcast. And sometimes you'll see me by myself with the show and sometimes you see me interviewing fun people. And today we're interviewing someone I've met through the fitness industry. Her name, Denise. Say it, Denise. In Bessie. In Bessie. It's okay. It's a tough one. She just told me how to pronounce it. But Denise it's okay. Bessie. She's the CEO and founder of Muscle Mixes Music. She was a pioneer and she created this in 1988 before anyone in the industry started making music on for fitness industry, the mixes. And That's she'll right. play more when she... When she gets in there, and she also has an app, the Vibes app that people use now, too, the Vibes Cap app. So she'll have her tell you more about that. So we're going to talk a little bit about her career and what she's doing in the industry with her music. And plus, we're, since you, when you watch my show or see my books or anything, I'm always about helping people. And I've worked with seniors and stroke survivors and dementia and all different subjects. And we're going to talk a bit about stroke and dementia as well, because she has had some, her parents go through that and we're about the same age and our parents the age when things happen. So welcome, right. Denise. Thank you, Tracy. I'm so glad to be here and I'm so happy to talk to everybody. And if there's any little bit of experience that I've had that I can help, sh you know, shed some light or, you know, inspire someone in some way, I'm happy to do so. So thank you, Tracy. Welcome. So glad you're here. So first, before we get into the dementia and our parents, going through things they yeah. go let's tell me about how you started your music the tape your your career what you yeah got. sure no problem so I was a dancer growing up and then you know if you don't dance teach right as they say so I got into teaching aerobic class when I was 15 years old with no shoes on I don't know if you ever did that. but um I started teaching classes and then long story short fast forward I became a DJ and combining the love of music and the love of dance together, it just made sense for me. I realized that there was a void in the industry that instructors really needed a specific music to teach their classes. And we came out with Muscle Mix at that time in 1988. Um, fast forward to today, we now have a, an app called Vibes Music, and we're using real music by the real artists, by the original artists. Mm -hmm. um, and it's for instructors. Yeah, it's great. And it's it, it gives instructors the ability to change the BPM, the tempo to where they need. Yeah. So that's, that's our primary, that's my primary business now. When I remember when I was, I was 19, I think it was 1988. I was, I was, I, my first certification was, was through the YMCA. It was like a three or five, what is it? Three or five days a week thing for a couple of weeks. We went for a few hours in the evening and we got certified. I got certified in step. That's when Reebok went step out and all that. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And dance aerobics. And, um, the music, the hardest thing for me to learn was the eight count, which is, I couldn't get the eight feet. I'm like, what do you say? And then yeah, I people, yeah. had dance in college. It was making sense, but we needed that box of the 32 count. To Absolutely. Absolutely. And you, Absolutely. at the time, you couldn't just pull something off the radio and tape it because they never followed that all the time. So it was hard to That's read true. music like you made. So, because the people could follow your steps more if it went in the little box. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Learn, learn all that too. Absolutely. Yeah. It's been great. It's been a great career. I love the fitness industry. I love everybody in it. Uh, I feel like people have a lot more of an upbeat outlook on life. At least that's been my experience. Those that are in it, uh, people are more, especially women, you know, it's my minority, majority women in the fitness side, although that is changing. Um, and I find that women are very motivated, very passionate, and they live very full, rich lives. Uh, women who are exercise, eat well, take care of themselves. You know, it just seems to be that way. Yeah, Have you, you seen well, that too? Have you noticed yeah. that too? When you're eating well and taking care of yourself, um, it's kind of you have this self-respect for yourself and a self-care. Yeah. And I think it makes you more positive and treat people be better in the world. In most cases. Good point. Good point. Yeah, in most cases. Yeah, of course. Because if you don't have self-care, yeah. it's hard for people, I think, to well, I know there's a lot of good caregivers that may not care for me, but there's kind of a, a strength and a self-care. Mm -hmm. 
you can do more. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, that's a very good. Yeah, you have the energy, right? Especially as you get older. Yeah. So you started when it was on cassette tapes. That's right. Not not be not the eight track tapes. Nope, nope. Cassettes. Then we went to CDs. Then we went to downloads. And now we have an app. How is all that changing each time? Was it just like, oh my god, that change? Ooh, a whirlwind. Yeah, a whirlwind. It's been challenging. Um, I have to say, going to technology has been the hardest with an app. Um, it seemed way easier to go from cassette to CD to CD to downloads than it is to go to an app. app is a whole different thing. Yeah, in terms of technology, it's very hard. Yeah, very hard because we can't speak the language. It's a different language. People who develop some stuff. So um, we've been fortunate. We've been fortunate that we have a great app development team. And um, yeah. So, How did you find one? How did you? Did you know, I, I got creative. I said, I'm going to find an app developer who develops DJ apps. That's how I found them, to Mark. be honest. And lo and behold, there is such a thing. So that's how I found one. Because um, I tell you why reinvent the the wheel, you know, if it's somebody who does something already that's similar to what you're needing. So that's how we did that. Yeah. It's nice that it's um the real artist too. Oh, absolutely. That's yeah, that took me two years to get that contract with uh, Universal Music, but it's it's going. Yes. Yeah, well, how many times I teach you classes? are fine but you always have that one person like these aren't the real singers it's like <laughs> i know i know you can't just put them in here unless you yeah, yeah. yourself and that's not the same exactly exactly you had to like to follow code and this and uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. that's so funny yeah that's so true so did you teach low impact high impact just how oh you said you did it barefoot huh i started out teaching high impact which i think everybody did right there wasn't any low impact and then I remember when High Low came out, I loved High Low. Now, I can't imagine doing it now. I mean, God, you have so much energy, right? I was like 17, 18. Um, but High Low was, my, was great. Then Step came out in 1990. And it was so popular. I was not a lover of Step because I felt restricted on the bench. But um, anyways, and then I taught yoga for a while. Uh, and then I stopped. So I love being a participant now. I love teaching step, but I hated taking it. Yeah. Because really? I, well, at the time, I don't think I realized I had a hearing loss because I were my hearing aids. I think sometimes when I was a student, it I would get messages slower. And then I by the time I caught up to what I'm doing, I'm something else. And that was aerobics yeah. too. And dance classes. So I was always better as a teacher because I would teach what I could do. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, no, it's true. Great. Yeah, it took me a while to understand. I was like, why can't I not take a class very well, but I can teach a class? Like, oh, because I know what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, here's what's interesting now that you said that, Tracy. Um, we were working with Reebok at the time, mm -hmm. and we were working with Jen Miller, the creator of Step, and she had uh, people come in to teach her. She had people who were who had hearing loss or who were deaf to teach her how to do visual cues to represent up, down, to the right, to the left circle. And she started using their cues. And then she took those and taught instructors how to implement them. Oh, I did yes. not know that. Isn't that amazing? Like different things like two two fingers and you know, things like that. I, I don't know all the different things, but um, she actually learned it from people. Yeah. Yeah, she learned it from people who couldn't hear. So that was interesting. Yeah. Oh, I like the history. I Isn't that interesting? I haven't seen that around in a while either. Long term. Yeah. I used to be in the 90s and it was ESPN and they had the fitness channel, Fit TV. Oh, yeah. Fit TV. Yeah. I was a big fan of it was her. Oh, there's a list, a group I just watched all the time and um, Keanu, Keanu Pong. Ke Oh, that is. ESPN, um, kind of Hawaiian, really pretty girl who did it out, did um, mm. training people outdoors. She was in, she? and I think she's in the Fitness Hall of Fame too. Oh, yeah. I, I still does stuff, but she doesn't, she's not, she's a liver of her events. 
but she would be perfect there. She's she's awesome. She's yeah. smart. Um, and this looks fucking nerd. So okay, so uh, we're getting as you're listening to this interview or watching, we're both been in the fitness industry. For a and, long time. and those are in the fitness industry, you're you're understanding everything we're talking about. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and the beats and and yeah, it's 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 a fun industry. But it's, it's true. Work too. It's work. It's yeah. work, but it's a fun industry too. Know our muscles and know what we're doing. We need to understand things that people come to, our, you know, different dynamics. We have people with arthritis, people who's had strokes, people that absolutely medical and issues or broken bones or pains in their spine and things of such. That's right. So That's right. with that, we're going to move to, and there's more, anything you want to share more, just pop in and say about your stuff too. Sure. No um, problem. So Denise and I both are about the same age. Um, give yeah. her, and our parents, I don't know about your parents, but mine were all, they, oddly enough, so I had a stepdad, I had my father and my mom, um, okay. all of them actually passed away at the age of 80. Yeah. Me out. When I look back, like, oh my God, everyone passed away at 80, oh my God. And oh, wow. uh, I had, my father had diabetes real bad. He spent his last five, five years of his life on three days a week dialysis. My son, wow. and they're both were the people. My dad probably went to the doctor sooner. My they're they're kind of the generation. I don't know about your parents. They like going to the doctors, especially the men. Mm -hmm. oh, doctors mm -hmm. didn't have a fake pill. They don't mean anything. They just try to sell you. <laughs> Never went to the doctor until he was near eighty. Mm -hmm. After he turned eighty, he at one point he had a stroke. Like the word they said, the worst kind you can have, but he had not very bad symptoms from it just a few different things but he was being fine wow. and he also ended up getting prostate cancer turned to bone and so he got mm. he got diagnosed with prostate cancer and because he finally went and got checked because he was having pain that's why he went to the doctor in okay. April 2020 right when COVID shut down it was like COVID shut down our businesses he was diagnosed so not that I welcomed COVID but I was no. so glad I was shut down so I could be with him so then it right then had his bone cancer and four months he passed. Aww. And my dad went to the hospital three weeks later and he passed in December. So it was just this way. Wow. And then my oh, daughter, so Bobby, whoever who knows, he's my little work dog. He passed away. <laughs> it's just been oh. like, boom, 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 boom. That's a lot. Yeah, that's yeah. And then my mom ended up with pancreas cancer. And this is the things we go through. With your, I mean, it could be any age. I know people, they, their parents had strokes in their 30s and they're like teenage and or wow. like like the girl I interviewed the other day, her mom passed away with a stroke when she was 10 years old. So, you know, oh it's a, a lot of times it is the old, what we go through with older generate or older parents and we become caregivers sure. care of them. And sure. she's had her parents, one had a stroke and one had dementia. So we wanted to talk about, well, probably a lot, all of it, but more in the dementia part too, but just what we go okay. through on both her parents. So um, okay. I'm going to and let her share what she went through with her parents and how it affected yeah. her, her life. Or I'm happy to. You know, my mom, um, and yes, they both passed now, but um, my mom was a stroke ready to happen. <laughs> Very high, strong Italian woman. Uh, <laughs> but, but aside from that, she had an unusually, our doctor would tell her, they, she had an unusual, unusually high blood pressure that was very hard to monitor. Okay. Um, it would go way up, way down, way up, way down. And she never put in the time to really figure out which medicine would work. Because if she had stabilized that, she probably wouldn't have stroked. But she couldn't. Um, she couldn't tolerate the side effects of the medication. So as a result, she went unmedicated. And one day, the stroke happened. Now, I didn't even know. I mean, of course, I heard the word stroke, but I didn't know what it was. When that happened, we were literally in shock. I mean, when that kind of thing happens, you don't know, you don't know anything. And, um, you know, her face started to droop, all the typical stuff. It we was, were. we were with her, and it was yeah, the worst day of my life, really. It was actually worse than when she passed, because life was normal, and we were living life like everything was okay. And, you know, it was just a shock to the system, you know. It shocked um, the world, just like that. Yeah, the whole our whole world turned upside down. And, you know, was um, when I said when I was with her, I wasn't living with her. She was older. She was, I think, about seventy when she had a stroke. She died at eighty-five. 
But um, it was interesting because we had to change our whole life. You know, the mother is sort of like the matriarch of the whole, you know, of the whole family. Everybody had to change our life. We relied on her so much. We depended on my dad, especially. And I will never forget, she spent one month in the hospital. And they told us a week after she stroked, she'll never walk again. We were crying. We couldn't even believe it. What? Yeah, well, that woman. Yeah, well, that woman, she got up and she walked. She was determined. You know, I know this isn't this interview isn't about mental health, and okay. I really believe. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, okay, I believe mind over matter. I don't know what it was in my mom, but she was a determined individual, and I I really believe in her, my heart that she was determined to walk, and she did. That wasn't great. You know, one side was a little harder. And working with walked. horse lovers, I see that. I mean, sometimes really? they so interfering, they literally can't. But I can see diff- the dynamics of some people that were so depressed by it and didn't have help. Mm. I could see the dynamics of the mental health. I couldn't always tell how much was the brain and how much was their surroundings mm. and their life. But sure. their, the brain, but like Gary, in my first book, The Self Artist, he, he was told he will never walk again. A lot of them are told that. That's not so always interesting. Mm-hmm. And some they do that. Private, I think can get through it. If their brain will heal that way. Some people, if the brain will, oh, I can't. They tell me I can't, so they don't try. And I think that's really sad. That's why one of my books talks about how they limit people. They tell you this stuff, yeah, and then yeah. they so they some people just go, oh, okay, okay. Well, I can't. Walk. Right. Like no, she was determined. She didn't. She didn't want to hear that. So I have to say, you know, even though she stroked and she did have that one side that was bad until she was 85, she worked so hard in physical therapy and occupational therapy. Man, they worked her hard. And, you know, I don't know if this happens to everybody, but she bounced back. I mean, she bounced back. It's like that. It's like they're they're training for a sport. Because when you're like an athlete, you're like, you're, you train, train, train before you go out for the football season. And that's a great like analogy. Like famous athlete. They're, it's the only thing. It's a great going. analogy. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great analogy because they worked her hard. She would get so angry about it. I don't want to go. You know, just like anybody doesn't want to go. But, um, but it helped her. And she, you know, she lived till 85. And then, uh, so here a weird thing happened. As soon as my mom stroked, my dad had started developing dementia like a year later. So we think that it, that's somehow related. I don't know. You know, it just seems like maybe he checked out for, you know, consciously or unconsciously. And we didn't know what that was either. What's dementia? What's the difference between that and Alzheimer's? The way it was told to us. If he thinks like forgetting things and getting angry sometimes, like what's wrong with my dad? Or did you guys just kind of knew, oh, I think that's dementia. I mean, how did you... Okay, it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> there are people listening will probably relate to it though, because things happen. Two things he did, both very embarrassing. One was he would urinate in public, like go for a walk and urinate. But the other thing is kind of funny. That's why I'm laughing. Um, my dad, you didn't know him, but he was the most kindest, sweetest. Prudish, most innocent man, you know, not a womanizer at all. He was starting to come on to women. <laughs> he started flirting and flirting right? yes. with the nurses where my mom was. So we said, all right, something's up. Now, this is not the way my dad was. You know, some guys are like that, but not my dad. So we said, okay, this is very strange, you know. Um, and we had him checked. And then that's that, those are the two things. And uh, honestly, the medicine they gave him, um, the way they explained it to us, was supposed to, it doesn't cure dementia, but it helps slow down the progression. And it took away those two things immediately, which was really great. You, your parents had really good doctors and care because some people, so? years, oh yeah, because your mom having good therapy helped her and yeah. your doctor listening to you the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, oh he's fine. They don't pay, they don't. Well, okay, I have to give my siblings some credit because we're very pushy in this family. I think between the three of us, you're right. I mean, they they blow it off. You know, she's never going to walk again. But we, you know, you have to be involved. I don't care where they're staying. 
I don't care what kind of assisted living they're in. You've got to be involved. It's just, it's, it's, you just have to, at least that's what we've learned. You do. And I know if your parents are like mine, they're, they're their age and generation. They're like, oh, the doctor will call me back. I'll just wait. Like, no, they haven't called in a week. Let's call them. Exactly. What do you mean they're watching exactly. three months out for a scan? Let me call. No, no, don't bother. That's me. exactly yeah, that's right. Your job. Yeah. So you, yeah. So exactly I get what you're right. saying. They, they're like, because my mom was waiting for her scans or her pancreas before, before she went and started uh-huh. cancer. I, something didn't feel uh-huh. right. They didn't get the scan. Yeah. They had her drop it off to the wrong place. I'm like, something's wrong. She's no, no, no. So I just didn't tell her. I started getting involved. And within a week, I got her in. Then after she's in, I said, yeah. oh, because I did this. She was, okay, thank you. Yeah. And if I told her I was doing it, she would have got upset. Because they don't. Yeah, absolutely. Bothering people. So, yes. No. Involved help. So, you guys know that. That's a, very, that's a very good point. I know that I'm making it sound like, you know, it's all roses, but really it wasn't. I mean, it was a lot. First of all, it was a lot to get them to turn over the ability for us to make these decisions. They have to sign something, you know. You can't just do that without their permission. So just that, you know, took a while. I mean, it took a long time Did you to get, get them in the assisted involved, living. Lawyers involved Did you? Too. You have to get lawyers involved too. Uh, Really? No, not really. We had a place locally called Elder Advocates that we hired to help us to get Medicaid set up and, and that kind of stuff. You know, mostly financial, financial related, not as much legal. But um, getting them into the assisted living facility was a challenge. They did not want to leave their house, not want to leave their house. There was no choice to, you know, she couldn't go from stroking, living in a hospital for a month, to all of a sudden have my dad who had dementia take care of her. It just didn't make sense. Yeah. So that was challenging. Um, and that's hard. That's, to oh, it was tough. And once we got them into the, the assisted living, I got to tell you, those places are like country clubs. It's amazing. There's so much to do on a daily basis. Every hour there's a swim class. They're taking a bus to the grocery store. They're going on a tea. They're having a tea party. I mean, it was nonstop activities if they chose to. Now, my dad was very much an introvert, so he didn't do any of that. My mom was involved with everything. And they got to live so, together? They got to live their own apartment? Different floors. Okay. Different floors because, you know, he had dementia, so he had to live in the memory care. Okay, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And I have to say, I mean, Florida is where we live, and some of the best places are here because some of the most older people are here. And even here, the memory care units, they're just not nice. And we we looked everywhere. They just are not nice. Yeah. Like you want to fake these people sometimes, these places, and say, they're human beings. They're not, you know, robots. I yeah. mean, care a little bit. You know, it's that's the hard part is. He, he, was, he went in the hospital in August 2020, and he passed in December, but he went, kept going from the hospital to the nursing home. He never went back home. So that was several months. And so every time right. I talked to him on the phone, he would say, well, they need to come change my diaper. And he'd be embarrassed. He goes, I don't want to bug mm-hmm. him. But he goes, it's all over my leg and stuff. So I'd call him right, like, right. I want to check on him. Yeah. And then yeah. He, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was just kind of sad because sometimes they just, like, I remember one time going to the doctor with my stepdad. Like, it was awful. He was you know, they start getting frail and he's with a walker and we had to go to the um, urologist for him. Yeah. They treated him like he couldn't get up on, um, the, you know, they always say, you know, sit in the bench in the doctor's room. Me and my mom never with him. Couldn't get up on the by himself. Yeah. I said, can you help him? Can you help him? Right. Dance? right. Then, I mean, you know, your back hurts. Right. He starts pulling out, like, can you do this stretch and this stretch? And he's trying to draw pictures of the psoas muscle and stuff. So I had my my books and my oh I had my app with oh wow thing with all my muscles like you mean this like oh he knows that he's read my book he's looked at me like he was all offended wow. but like he has bone cancer and he's you know he was declining he's not going to go outside yeah. and start doing stretches and exercising no, like, no are you guys right. present to what you're doing I was so mad yeah and yeah yeah and he only passed within a couple weeks but I they just yeah. treat him like he was just oh he's just some old man he's not gonna last long that's how exactly they do it exactly exactly Hated it. Yeah, and as hard as you try to find the right place, I mean, you have to be involved. The other thing we did was we hired somebody, you know, because we all work, the three of us, my siblings and I, to actually go visit them a couple times a week oh, and nice. do those kinds of things to make sure 
to check up on the people that we were paying. You know, it's just, you had to have that. You had to have that. So, um, but here's one thing I want to interject that I realized um, was so helpful, both of them. And that is music. And I'm not just saying it because, you know, we have a music company. But let me tell you, when I would go in and play for my dad, Frank Sinatra, or any of that old stuff. Wow. Like, oh, he knew every word. It was unbelievable. And he would just be so happy. He would light up and he'd be singing. And same with my mom with Elvis Presley and Tom Jones and some of that old my mom. Motown. They just were so happy. You know, if they you know, would. Study, yeah. I listened to, sorry, I listened to um, some neuroscientists do some lectures. And years ago, one of them was talking about music. And when people have strokes, if they listen to their, their favorite music, and the first three to six, I think, I can't remember if it's three or six months right now. Mm -hmm. If they listen to the music that's their favorite music, right. they have better recoveries. It helps them recover quicker because they're in that stage where the brain takes it. So I had I a man who was 83-year-old stroke survivor, I think, at the time. I met him two years after stroke, and he had he got dementia with it, too. So he would, like, go to lunch at the senior center that his wife mm -hmm. would work out with me, and he wouldn't even remember he was just there and had lunch. And he would, we'd practice, we, we had a, a basketball court, which I have him walk there. But if I put on the big band music and the stuff he liked, exactly. Back, exactly. He was younger. He had a band. He would pick up. He would start walking, and he knew the words. It just it it's just brought his soul and brain alive in a different way. And so, yes, the I music, agree. like scientifically proven. Yeah. Scientifically proven. I don't know of anything else that universally, I think, affects everybody in, in the same way and positive. It makes you happy. It literally yeah. makes you happy. Makes you remember. Makes you have memories. And what makes you forget memories? It makes you you feel it. Yeah, you feel it in your body. So we did that a lot. We would always bring over, you know, like a boombox or whatever to make sure. And these are the things that I felt were missing, even in the assisted living. They don't think in terms of quality of life more that they could bring in did on occasion like on Sundays they would bring in somebody to sing a song and I guess they did they did do that to a degree but I don't think they did it enough and um you know why didn't they have counseling like mental health counseling why didn't they have, uh, why didn't they have massage you know uh, my, my sister is a hairdresser why didn't they have somebody to like do their hair or for the women or do their nails or do their you know yeah. So, I mean, those kinds of, they're human beings. They're older, but they're human, you know, and that's, anyway, not trying to no, complain. No, but, that's, but part of, that's part of everything we're talking about because yeah, when our, or anybody is going through these different ages, but we are have our parents at that age going through uh -huh. different major things mm -hmm. health-wise. Yep. The other people are just doing their quick job, you know, like my that's mom, right. knee replacement. Um, several you know, years back we're in Oregon at the time and I went to physical therapy with her one day and the guy put her on her machine and um she starts talking to someone over there and she's like on her 50th breath I'm like because she said don't say anything don't embarrass me I go stop I go you shouldn't do that many or her foot, I go, turn that foot straight he wasn't paying attention or he was writing the note in the computer from the client that just left oh as she's doing. and I'd be like holding your hands because he wasn't paying attention and, and it concerned me because sometimes they just yeah. don't. So, and a lot of, and yeah. sometimes, yeah. like in every industry, you have the great people and then you have ones like, oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, and yeah. I'm glad absolutely. that if we know enough about bodies, we can help with that yeah. too because yeah. it means something for sure. And there were many, there were many, at least uh, we noticed in the, in the assisted living facility, there were a lot of people that were there whose families lived up north or were not close by. and. You know, I mean, I feel for them. Yeah. But um, being at yeah. at different times. And one time also when my client Gary, when he went in, yeah, yeah. he went in for a heart. He called me up in the morning. He goes, oh, I'm not going to come to my training today. And he's laughing. I go, why? And he goes, well, I was dizzy last night. So I'm in the hospital. They're going to do like just a bowel thing. But it was something that people got all the time. Well, he yeah. came up with it okay. And then something happened. They made an error, I think. Something happened. And he ended up... Um, oh almost stroking out again something happened oh. got an infection and then he ended up passing away but I got to go to the ICU 
and then mm-hmm. walking through there um he was in he was in portland i was like three hours away me and my friend went um and mm-hmm. most people were alone in there it just made yeah. me as a kid, whenever I saw an older person yeah. on the phone, I would cry. Like, I'd be at a restaurant with my dad eating dinner or something when I was little, and I'd see someone over there, and they're probably, like, just eating alone because they're I'm sick of myself. They want to. Maybe they want to, yeah. They look lonely. So I've had the thing to help seniors and older people in me since I was born, I guess. Really? Yeah. But I right. Oh, you're a big heart. You know, it really is wonderful to sit and talk with them, you know, mm-hmm. uh, as they have so much to say, so much to share, so many experiences. So I did like going there and I liked bringing my daughter there and my niece and nephew were young at the time. And, you know, they just, it's just, it's just a great, it's a great age and it's a great, um, so much to learn from them. And did but, your um, dad yeah. get to the point where he didn't know who you guys were? Towards the end. Yes. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the way we were taught, this is what we were told. We were told dementia affects the frontal lobe and Alzheimer's affects the base of the, of the, that's what they told us. So uh, having dementia, again, this is what they told me. They told us that having dementia is like drinking too much. Like you lose your inhibitions and stuff like that. Uh, Whereas Alzheimer's is more where they wander and they might leave the building and not know where they're going. My dad wouldn't do that. So he remembered us for a long time. They'd always say, what's, you know, who's the president of the United States or what's today's date? And he always knew. So it's so strange. Yeah. It's interesting right. because both, de- yeah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, it's interesting now that I'm thinking about both dementia and stroke are, are brain specific. I think a brain right? injury in a way. Yeah. 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 The it's normal interesting. is not going. Yeah, it's unbelievable. You know, um, it's funny when you said, because they always ask who's the president. So when my stepdad had his yeah. stroke, I thought this was funny. Um, <laughs> it was back in the time, Trump wasn't president yet, I'm not getting into politics, but it was still, is it going to be Hillary? No, no, he was president now. He was he became president, and I don't remember how long he was there at the time. And my, they asked who's president. My stepdad's like, oh, I know who it is. <laughs> I liked him at first, but kind of not anymore. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> it was hilarious. Because and I know it's funny the way they, yeah, like, they're like, you know, we're here, though, what's going yeah. on. <laughs> Something easier than that, would you? Yeah. Like, I don't even know today's date. Uh, what is it, March 28th? I mean, don't ask me that, you know. But, so, yeah, they always do ask me. The thing with dementia that not a lot of people know about. Um, okay. And maybe you do know, but since I've had my hearing loss, I've studied brain things and stuff. And I've worked with, I haven't worked, but I was a um, ambassador for Starkey Hearing. So I've had conversations interviewing with them and stuff and learned some stuff with Starkey Hearing. They make hearing aids. When older, well, anybody, but specifically more like older people, a lot of older people need hearing aids. They're having hearing issues. Don't get them. So when you need hearing aids and you don't get them, that part of your brain that functions for hearing, not that Mm. it dies off, but it, it goes. Oh, wow. So so I've told some of my male clients this and they go and get their hearing aids. I've had wives call me and say, how did you get him to get hearing aids? I've been trying to get him for five years ago. I told him he can get dementia. He got him the next week because you're making me go do it because I need to do it. I'm having hearing loss right here. I got both, but the left side. I think they think I, I was born with some nerve damage or something, but I just read mm. real good. So when I was in school, in elementary school, and didn't learn really well, they said, oh, honey, it's because your parents are divorced. Because back in the day, mm. we were in school. I was class of 83. What were you, like 82? 81. 81. 81. Back when we were in elementary school, I don't know about you or you grew up, but our hearing test in school was everyone lines up in the cafeteria and you sit down and someone puts ears on you, you go, hey, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, and, and you raise your hand. hand. That's right. That's but a real hearing test, you're at a hearing doctor for about an hour. Oh, yeah. Oh, and they yeah. test you deeply. So they, yep. I was having a hard time learning. I, I, I think I said this in my last um, podcast, too. When they, the teachers, oh, honey, it's because your kids, your parents are divorced. You can't focus. I was like, I call the dummy English the reading. Oh, but boy. I, in my 30s or 40s, I remember no, when I went to the hearing doctor, he goes, no, it wasn't that. You, you can't hear. I go, oh. Because you didn't oh, have- it's not. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, and another sign of hearing loss too, I don't know if you, you experience this, is fatigue. Because you have to focus so much hearing sometimes. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Do you fatigue all the time and go all the time? And he goes, it's because you're, you don't know it, but we look at lips to help mm -hmm. us hear. Yeah. Well, during COVID time wearing masks, a lot of people realize they had a sense of hearing loss because they don't really wow. know they fill in words. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but it is a study and a medical fact, I guess you can call it, that not taking care of hearing loss. Mm. But I, I don't know if it's Yikes. specific people or everything. Well, thank you for letting me know that. I'm going to go, uh, I've been putting it off. Yeah. I'm putting it off. I need to do it. I, I know that I'll, I'll hear things so much better by doing that. Like just going to the movies in the movie theater, they don't have closed caption on. I'm like, what's going on? There's nothing going on. You know, so. they, a lot of times in movies and TV shows, some shows and movies I can't watch where they play too much music and the music overrides yeah. the voices of the people. And it's yep. like, I turn it down. I can't hear you. Or if exactly. I try to do meditation CDs or something, if the music uh -huh. uh, hits the tone that's higher than mm -hmm. the person talking, I have to go mm -hmm. to hell. You're done. Yeah. 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 So um, that's good. Well, so with the music stuff you do. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. So I think, you know, I think I love what we're saying here. I think that the biggest takeaways are if your parents or anybody you love is kind of going through dementia or stroke, be involved because no one's going to take care of them as much as we are. Be involved because there's so much more we did. When I say we, me and my siblings, like you said, to push like, well, what do you mean? When's that test going to come back? You know, calling and being on them constantly that's so important and also knowing too now i don't know about your parents but i know even me the things i've gone through in life a lot of times you go through something your friends are like oh i don't know what to say i don't want to do and they just scatter that's so true like, mm -hmm. older person with dementia your friends are like oh don't invite that you know you 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 mm -hmm. start to get almost isolated not mm -hmm. all the time yeah. depends on not everybody it depends on your friends depends on what you right have. right that is just what life is you know yeah yep. and they're like oh you know I remember one girl sure. told me, when I went through my divorce years ago, my stepdaughter I was close to got diagnosed, was diagnosed with bone cancer at the same time. She was 12. Oh, boy. And I've had, I had people going, well, oh, when everything's better, we'll go out to lunch. I'm thinking, when everything's better, I'm not going to want to talk to you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, the way people back away sometimes if someone's struggling. So if we yeah. have our people we know going through stroke or dementia or anything, especially our older people. Yeah. They may get isolated a lot. So it is good to check on them. And like you had mm. someone else go there when you guys are working. I think that's very that's sure. kind. And that's not because when some, this is another thing I, I, I read in the studies. Um, when people are isolated a lot, they're not speaking as much. Well, yeah. Of and so that can, I don't know. I don't think it causes dementia, but can play a role in it because mm. people don't talk to people for eight hours a day. They're wow. gone. Phone and they may pick up the phone or they're just alone so they may watch yeah people, but they're yeah. not hearing talking losing mm -hmm. all the interacting their yeah. emotions yeah and that is like there there was this stuff keep saying studies um i had a client years ago her mother was 100 and she said that a doctor told her that women that have really close close friends live longer and when she was 100 she still had some girlfriends and they would all hang out. Oh, I believe that. I believe that. Cool. I believe that. Yeah, I sure. took a big loan. I just read an article recently that said the happiest people are single women and married men. <laughs> I've been here because I've been single for a really long time. <laughs> and married um, women. Isn't that funny? Because, well, we know why. You don't have to say why. But, um, but yeah, I think the social circle for sure. I mean, they've proven that time and time again, having people in your life that make you laugh, make you uh, be creative, you know, have hobbies. Um, I know that again with my parents, I mean, the only reason why they lived as long as they did, my dad died at 93, you know, was because of all of that. They had each other. They had us visiting regularly. They had, you know, and really, those assisted living facilities are amazing. They're great in that area. They're great in having a lot of, like I said, activities and people around. And, and did your you parents know, have a phone? I, I have oh, yeah. Smart oh, yeah. Did you have to use a smartphone? My mom did. My dad didn't want to be bothered with it. But my, my mom loved it. My mom was 
Yeah, 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 yeah. She loved it. She loved looking stuff up and, you know, texting us. And uh, yeah, so for sure. I mean, my, my stepdad always got them the, the track phones, you know, the old oh, flip phones. And he would uh-huh. get track phones by thing. So when he passed away, and of course, we we're very sad. We were just devastated. But within like a week, oh. like, I want a real phone. <laughs> <laughs> and she got her first um, smartphone. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Oh, well, I love what you do. Any computer. Yeah, I love what you do, Tracy, and I love that because I think what you do is like what we needed at the time. After my mom had a stroke, I feel like they throw you out in the wild. After I mean, she was so well taken care of in that month that she stayed in the hospital. I mean, constant all the stuff that we talked about. The, physical therapy, occupational therapy, activities, blah, blah, blah. But then all of a sudden she's thrown out into the world and now what? You yeah. know, now she's got to be a person that lives with a stroke. You know, with one side that's not 100%. So I'd love what you do because I feel like you are one of the people that participates in filling that void of helping people go on, you know, in, when I was because working, there's so much. Oh, there's so yeah. much. When I was working with that man, Gary, for my first book, mm-hmm. Stroke. But then during COVID time, some reason, because we originally were going to call the book, Dear Stroke, You Suck. The Journey of Fitness Trainer. So clever. Because he would just stop in the middle of work and go, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't yeah, ever yeah. talk to stroke based stuff. Just out of the blue. So, and he would always say he wants to share a story. So one day I'm like, okay, let's write a book and we'll call it that. And then a couple of weeks before I was putting the title together and publishing it, he was an mm. artist. And he said... I asked him one day, you know, because it took him a long time to get his artwork back, you know, to be able to write and do his artwork. So I go, oh. and he said, because he didn't like his art afterwards, but it was still good. He mm. said um, he wants to make like a long, thin, black stroke, and it always ended up being a short, thick. I go, oh, a stroke of an artist, so we changed the book. And then in oh. time, something said, bring it back out with a new name. So I did. I don't know if it was good for business or not. And I just made everything larger and bigger. Because I realized, you know, caregivers are exhausted. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. when I doesn't work after a stroke and you need, not that the words were bad size, I just made them bigger. Yeah, yeah. But um, I didn't say where I was going with that. So what I found working with him, it, that we we're at the gym and mm-hmm. There was a small town, so there was a few trainers there. And some, I, I had a lot of education because I was always just learning, learning, learning. And some of them were the ones that just got a weekend course. Well, that's a different. Yeah. You need to know where my muscles tapped with you. And having more advanced, and he'd sit there and go, oh, my God, they don't know what they're doing, do they? You got to share your <laughs> stuff. You have to share it. You know, Tracy, we need to help more people. My story can help one people. So that's how that came out. But that also made me see what's going on out there more. The people are leaving yeah. physical therapy and like, what do I do? Where do I go? What if you exactly. go to work? And there's yeah. a thing. So I started um, a stroke support group on Facebook and mm. all these, I, at the time, I think it's over 5,000 people now, but people are in mm-hmm. there and looking at other ones and they're asking each yeah. other advice and some of the advice wasn't good. I'm like, well, this isn't good. People are like giving each other exercises that one shouldn't do because oh, you can't wow. just go online and go, what's the five best exercises for a stroke it's like what's well, yeah I can't yeah oh, so, I see. um in the in the support group one day I said okay you guys I have a question for you guys what was your biggest challenge when your physical therapy ended yeah and you're trying to find someone in the fitness industry yeah. to help you because what they say their physical therapist in the physical therapy ends because insurance and so they, right. the recovery ended that's right. That's true. So sad. Yeah. Yeah. Because there could be someone who their arm didn't move for six months and it came back with therapy and the other one took a year to get there, but they didn't get that year chance to get there because the, the insurance says you're not getting any better. So they stopped them. So if they don't they stop on, they won't know. They think, right. oh, the insurance says I'm done. So what they said was, yeah. Yeah, I, I was like, most of them said personal trainers don't know their muscles. Personal trainers treat us like we're inve- irrelevant. Wow. A couple of them had good experiences, but I mean, I had like a hundred answers and I would say 80% of them were not good. But these two wow. stories stuck with me the most. One man said that he went back to the gym and he actually had, he said, I actually had my stroke at the gym on a treadmill. So now he's back at the gym. Whoa. Like Whoa. go from up to the treadmill. 
And the, the stroke survivor told him, well, just so you know, I can't hold on very well with one arm anymore because of my stroke. And I had my stroke on a treadmill, so I'm a little scared. And the trainer told him, oh, that's his excuses, dude, anyway. And he walked away. And the guy said, I wanted to punch him, but my punching arm was the stroke of the side. And then he said, so I gave up. I stopped looking. So I feel bad oh, for that man because yeah. he could have gone further but because of that experience, but that was his mindset. So I the other that. extreme case was a man yeah. that had yeah. 10 bad experiences until he found a trainer that said, it was a trainer that was a paramedic that did training part-time. Yeah. He said, right. I'm not sure exactly how to train you, but let me find out some stuff. And they trained together. He recovered greatly and they started bodybuilding together. So oh. that's the mindset comes in too. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing. I love that. So that made me um, want to write the course and start getting fitness industries to know your muscles. Because if you don't know where the bicep muscle attaches and you don't know what muscle you know lifts your arm in this movement, how are you going to yeah, help? They're exactly. Exactly. You don't know what the wrong wow. one is. So that's what made me start. Because it made me feel sorry for the stroke survivors. Because I remember one day watching Gary. So true. So me and his sister were friends, and one of her sister's friend, his sister's friend, lived in the small town, and she would drive him to therapy. And so sometimes we'd all go to lunch. Yeah. We're walking downtown. I don't know if you ever saw me. Well, oh, you can't see the picture. It's a big bridge here. We'd walk down a little bit. Yeah. And one day he just kept walking, and her friend was like, "Oh, we got to get Gary." I go, "No, I think he's enjoying his walk. <laughs> he doesn't have all these women telling him what to do. He has his wife, his sister, his sister's friend, and me." I go, "He's." Probably just enjoying this. We went down the block, came back, and it was that nice. It was, oh my God, it was so nice. But I remember watching him walking, going, Oh my God, if he would have been with a trainer that didn't have yeah. knowledge or tried to learn stuff, he would have still had his AFO on. Um, wow. Maybe still been in a walker. Mm -hmm. And he would have always just thought it was his brain. Oh, but I thought it was, awesome. he was limited by the therapist or the trainer, the fitness professional's education. So, I started seeing that they were, their recovery was, and it wasn't their brain. If they're limited, right. they were limited by the limited knowledge of the person they're with. And I swear mm. that broke my heart, like, that's not fair. That can stop. No, them. for sure. And it can save for them sure. whatever's going on in their life. So that's what made me keep doing what I've done because I just thought that's just. Right. Wow. wow. Yeah. Tracy, um, this has been so nice. Um, I have another meeting in one minute. <laughs> So I have to go, unfortunately. How do you want to wrap things up? I'm sorry I didn't realize the time, but I have to. Um, That's okay. Yeah. Well, I'm but so this has been so nice. Thank you. Yeah. Your stories and my stories helps people. And I hope so, too. Or, yeah. So for everyone, if you, it's, it's the Health and Fitness Show with Tracy. But if you go to my website, www.tracymarklaway.com, tracymarkley.com. Okay. To show all the links, you'll 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 be able to watch this on YouTube, or you can just Great. listen to the podcast on all the podcast channels. So, Love it. Um, and also I will share all your links in there too, so you can please. But, but yeah. share your contacts right now if you'd like. Yes, please do. So we are um, vibesmusicapp.com, v i b e s m u s i c a p p dot com. And are you still musclemixes.com too? We uh, that's how my web address is hello at muscle mix. My email is hello at muscle mixes. Yes. And so and if you get any of that stuff, yeah, watch the <laughs> podcast or hear it, just look below and you'll see all the things because once this comes on board, you'll see it all. This is so nice. Okay. I I really, really bottom line, mind over body, music over everything. And Keep a positive attitude. That's that's really what it's all about. And thank you, everyone, for being here. And like I always say, be kind to yourself and be kind to others because that's good brain care for you and good brain care for others. And that's a good for part them. of all those topics today, too. I love that. I love that. So great to see you, Tracy. Thank you, everyone. I hope I helped a little bit. You did. Yeah. If we only yeah. help one person. That's, a that's right. If we help one person. Tracy, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye, everyone.